Katie Scotcher. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah? Cool. Well, morena koto katoa. Today I am announcing that I am running for the co-leader of the Green Party of Aotearoa in New Zealand. Times are tough, but they do not have to be. I want everybody who is listening to know that it is all of us who get to choose our future. If we find our common ground, organise and make things about the so-called balance that we have to find between environmental fundamentals necessary for life on Earth and so-called good economic opportunity, as our new Prime Minister put it so callously this Tuesday at Question Time. But this trickle-down, climate-shredding economy is man-made, and it can and it must be remade. This time last year, we were in the thick of clean-up efforts with the Auckland anniversary floods. Cyclone Gabrielle was yet to hit. And we saw what worked. It was the community. Neighbours help neighbours party of Aotearoa New Zealand because we understand this to our very core. We understand that to confront the crises of our time, it is going to require cooperation at a scale unlike we have ever seen before. We understand that the necessary transformation of our economy and of our systems isn't going to come from top-down vested interests that this government represents. So after conversations with all of my caucus colleagues, party members, family and friends and many people that I admire and respect today in our communities, I have contributed to our movement as a hard-working, researched radical who wants a livable planet, wealth tax, rent controls, healthy rivers and a guaranteed minimum income for all. In Auckland Central, we have mobilised campaigns of thousands to win the personal mandate for those ideas in an electorate with a majority National Party vote and a majority Labour Party vote, where we were behind in all of the polls. And both times we have grown the Green Party vote and we will continue to do so. I will as co-leader of the Green Party of Aotearoa New Zealand. We will grow our green branches and provinces across the country to run local campaigns and implement local solutions above and beyond the election cycle. We will support local champions who embody our kaupapa and elect more Greens to local government at next year's local body election. We will continue to grow our Green Party caucus as the leading movement of the political left. And ultimately, we kept to remind people of our shared power to organise our communities to transform our world. No one person can do this alone. So mark my words when I say that we are going to build the biggest green movement that any of you have ever seen. And we are going to change our world for the better. Because after all, grassroots organisation like that is the only thing that ever has. Any questions? You consistently said that you didn't want the job. Sorry. You consistently said that you didn't want the job. Why don't you change? Look, I came here to represent my communities and I have spent the last few days... Mm -hmm. You have what it takes. How are you going to get there? We're going to get there by continuing to grow our green movement. We have consistently demonstrated that we have the capacity to attract incredible talent to our ranks with a range of experience out there in the real world. We will continue to attract that talent to our ranks. We will continue to grow our Green Party caucus and we will command that power inside of Parliament at some point in the future. That's the point. That is what I am here to do. I have demonstrated my capacity over the last several years to contribute to building that movement, and we will continue. I have spoken to all members of our caucus, all of our MPs, uh, but it is not my place to divulge private conversations. Brady. Well, you can I describe myself as a research radical, um, and it will come as no surprise to anyone here that I really do do my research, and I really do uh, value about myself with our Green Party members and branches and provinces across the country. Uh, but I'm also really excited to do that at scale with the Honourable Marama Davidson. So what it looks like in practice is actually just holding a mirror out to our communities and saying that, you know this thing of inspiration that we so frequently bandy about in terms of leadership or otherwise? Well, it's not an individual thing. It is not a reason to put somebody on a pedestal in fact, inspiration is a mirror. They've come to this place to represent their respective communities. So it's going to take time to bid that in. Uh, but I'm really excited as I look around our caucus table at the talent that we have. Jamie, Scott himself. If you, if you are successful, you succeed, Jamie Shaw. Hmm. Have you given any thought to how you would like to lead the party differently to James? Hmm. Is it going to be continuation hmm. and style, and policy? What will change? Hmm. 
Uh, so I think, you know, as you look around this room, you'll see Rod and Jeanette's uh, taonga um, framed up behind us. You'll also see two... So this is Green's government. Can we say that you want to be Prime Minister? This isn't about me, Jason. It's about the movement. It is about all of us working together to get to that place where we have the strong Green movement necessary to implement that policy you change. Head of that movement, which is the Prime Minister's job. I think you'll find that I'm running for the co-leadership, not for me myself. <laughs> I'm not interested in positions in much the same way that I've foreshadowed with all of you here. Yeah, I've been asked to do that by my communities who I represent, and I am asking all New Zealanders across the country to reflect on their power to step into positions where they too have the opportunity to lead with her about what this may look like. But again, it's not my place to divulge those private conversations. One of the things that I love about this party and why I'm a member of the Green Party of Aotearoa in New Zealand is that we, to our core, understand how deeply interconnected the issues are that we are facing. So frequently, we will see some really reductive and misinformed... Hmm. So I just want to be really clear that that consensus building that I aspire to do is not an abstract thing. It's something that I've amply demonstrated in the last six years. For example, to my understanding, my Election Access Fund Act, first drafted by Mojo Mathers, a former Green MP and someone also who I admire a lot. I and so you're going to be going out lobbying various different branches. Mm -hmm. What's your plan? So uh, nominations close on uh, Wednesday the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, uh, if any of you would like to put yourselves forward. Uh, and thereafter, we will see on Friday the 16th of February that candidate information and ballot papers are sent out to our branches all across the country. Uh, then we have some uh, uh, policy conference and a range of party-wide Zoom calls, so that it's super predictable, but we are incredibly democratic when it comes to those processes. So at this point, I couldn't tell you what's on other people's minds. What I can tell you is that I'm here to represent my communities. My community has asked me to stand up, and that's what I'm doing today. Are you going to outshine Chris Hipkins and become kind of de facto leader of the opposition? Look, I've said that I believe that the Green Party are the leading voice of the parliamentary left and the political left, and it is our job as the Greens to continue to mobilise our communities to stand against the declared hints and uh, what I've been up to over the last six years. Uh, I am incredibly interested, obviously, uh, in confronting the challenge of climate change uh, and climate action, particularly as I highlighted in my introductory remarks, we saw the impact of that in our largest city in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland at the beginning of last year. So climate continues to be a central focus, as does equality. And I think to the debate that we've been having in the chamber over the last few days, it's been mind-numbing to consistently hear, particularly members of the government, saying that they want a more productive... We want to bring about the... Le I see within the Green Party the potential and the capacity for leading government. That's my point. My point is that we are not a party of tinkering. We are a party of transformation. And when I talk to members of our community up and down this country, I hear and I see very clearly immense frustration with tinkering when they were promised transformation. Only the Greens can be trusted to continue. That's a reflection on the Labour Party in mm -hmm. itself, though, isn't it? Sure. So you don't think Labour's up to it? Sorry, Benedict? You don't think Labour's up to it? I'm in the Greens because I believe in our kaupapa, I believe in our people, and I believe in our capacity to organise and to mobilise to get the necessary radical change across the line. You have yet to hold a ministerial portfolio. Mm -hmm. If you were to make a Greens government, would you be in your interest in that? Look, that is ultimately a matter for our caucus and whatever kind of negotiating space that we're in at that point in time, how the numbers fall and otherwise. What I can tell you is that over the next three years, I will be focused, should I have uh, the privilege per our party member... Uh, Benedict, I have never repeated that terminology since actually, funnily enough, uh, I was heckled by Todd Muller, who then obviously was the uh, climate change spokesperson for the National Party, during a reading on the Zero Carbon Act, where I was making the point that we have thousands, tens of thousands of young people, rangatahi, across our country mobilising in the streets, and they weren't being heard by those who occupied positions of power. Uh, so I hope uh, to continue to do what I have done over the last few years, which is to unify people and to work towards... Uh, so I'm a nerd and a policy wonk when it comes to the detail of this stuff, uh, and I'm really, really passionate about it. But those conversations will be for caucus. The Reserve Bank is independent. Are you sure you could have you know, the willpower to be hands-off when there's an institution like that making the decision? 
you're talking about the Independent Climate Change Commission. Uh, well, I mean, the, the model that I was speaking to is that the Reserve Bank, as I put forward in that uh, minority view, uh, occupies a position of effectively being seen by many politicians, obviously, to hold that expertise. Most of you have been reflecting on a lot. But obviously, uh, in light of events over the last few months and years, uh, I think that the abuse that parliamentarians are subjected to, especially women and especially women of colour, is something not only for one individual party leader or co-leader, uh, but also something for members of the press gallery and something for all members of this institution of parliament to reflect upon. I have been quite concerned by the direction of travel that I've seen in the past month alone, where we have seen that what once might have been considered conspiracy fringe theories are put to members of parliament as legitimate... Examples of those um, conspiracy questions that you've seen in the last month that you've seen the uh, yeah, I can tell you that on Monday I was asked about something which had been circulating Twitter, which was demonstrably untrue, and then uh, transcended into a mainstream media headline and resulted in a lot more abuse in my inbox. Can you give us a bit of a timeline in terms of when exactly you decided to throw your hat in the ring? I mean, there's no secret that Jane Shaw wasn't, you know, you know hmm. the ground. Have you been thinking before he announced his resignation that you would... Sorry, Yeah, it was. Yeah, Friday. Um, just in following on Anna's point, uh, do you see there being space for more protections for women? I, I take the point mm -hmm. that you know, maybe more leadership in the space mm -hmm. to have social um, mm -hmm. discourse about these issues, but do you think that we can do more to protect health? Actually, anyone within the Green Party that is mm -hmm. actually brave enough to take you on, given your profile. <laughs> I mean, if you're a member of the Green Party, come on, let's do it. Uh, look, I just, I, I love our party. Um, you know, when I first came to the Greens, uh, I was not promised um, any position, and to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't necessarily expect that I'd get into Parliament. Obviously, I joined um, off the back of the 2016 local body election uh, and felt as though I didn't want to waste the privilege of the platform that came with that campaign. Uh, I think that all members 